Tom here from Orange Systems, and TrueNAS Scale Beta has been released. I've talked in the past about TrueNAS Scale. It is basically a reinvention, as I would put it, of the TrueNAS system based on Debian. So originally, TrueNAS would go back originally, I guess we'd say FreeNAS. FreeNAS became TrueNAS, but it's always been based on BSD. The departure over to Linux isn't exactly a departure. And I know people think it's like they're switching the project. It is a project that will run alongside TrueNAS. They modulize, as they would put it, the middleware. So you take the interface that you're used to and you put a different operating system behind it, but it still controls on the front end. You're sharing your NFS, SMB, and all the functionality on top of ZFS. This is a pretty big undertaking because well, when you spend a lot of time writing code for BSD, it doesn't just natively flip a switch and go to Linux. But the advantage of doing this is, of course, we have access to Docker and lots of better hardware support. And of course, a few other features that we'll talk about as we go through this. But before we dive into the details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire for a project, there's a hire us button at the top. If you'd like to hire for storage consulting, that's the place to do it. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, as usual, I'll be leaving links to all the things I talk about down below, but right here is the forum post by SVP of engineering, Chris Moore, who is a really talented developer here, and he is pleased to announce the 2106 beta of TrueNAS Scale has been released. With this beta, we kicked off a pre-release testing cycle to prepare for release version coming in the coming months. Now, I say it that way because I'm not gonna go absolutely in depth on this and tell you exactly how to like fully get started with it. I wanna just cover the basics. There's kind of a prerequisite here that you're familiar with the TrueNAS core system, you're already running it, uh, but I will at least cover, you know, some of the details and highlights here. I will also leave a link to this where, it, you know, scale stands for scale out ZFS, capacity and performance, converge, compute and store, active active reliability, Linux container and virtualization. And this is the real big one right there. The container system in the BSD world is, well, let's just say not as popular as Docker is in the Linux world. This is one of the reasons people are really excited about this release is to be able to pull Docker images on there. And I really want to get people out there testing this. And that's, by the way, this is not for production. This is for production for people like me who don't mind beta testing on their own stuff. But this is clearly not something I'm going to be rolling out to clients. But I know a lot of you are enthusiasts like I am and uh, excited about, you know, helping out with the development of this. And that means finding the edge cases and your configurations and where those bugs may lie so we can go back to the forums over at TrueNAS and make sure we report those bugs so they can get fixed. But I'll leave links to all this. It's not the little details about some of the things in there, but obviously the scale out ZFS, I'm not going to cover that, uh, but it's a pretty cool feature that's going to be underlying in this. It's still pretty new. They're going to be using Gluster FS. Um, coming in a future video, I'll dive into that. But let's first take a look at this, the installer, which really not too much to talk about. We'll start the TrueNAS installer, but it doesn't look substantially different than the TrueNAS core installer. So this is the scale beta. It's going to take a second while it thinks. And here's the TrueNAS 2106 beta one console setup. It's pretty much what you're used to if you've installed TrueNAS at all. So there's really not too much here. Go ahead and proceed with installation. Set a password. Whoop. Oh, set something simple. and it runs through the install process. I'm not actually for this rest of this demo, we're not gonna be running a virtualized install. I just did this to make this easy to display. I actually have real hardware running and not great hardware, but hardware nonetheless that we have uh, running for this that we're gonna do the demo on. Now, all I did was run through the installer and install this, but I had these drives, as in the data set drives that are attached to this, previously running TrueNAS Core. And all I did was go into TrueNAS Core, to system, general, and save the config. Nothing special here. Now, before I did that, of course, I had set up some shares, set up the permissions, and made sure it worked. I had an NFS share, I had some replication tasks, I had an SMB share, and I also had some snapshot tasks. So all that functionality I'd set up under TrueNAS Core, then I went and just exported the config. Now we have this right here, running beta, and we go over here to storage, no pool in here. Now I can create a pool or import a pool, but I could create shares, but as I said, I created them in TrueNAS Core. So one of the things I wanted to do was test the import feature. Now, of course, 
because the containerization part of this is different, you're not going to be able to import your jails from Shunas Core into Docker containers. It, there's no easy way to switch those. They are built on different container technologies. Therefore, they're not going to just drop right in there. There's going to be a pretty manual process for doing any of that, backing up configurations and such of the actual things running in your jails and transporting them over and rebuilding them from an operating system level and then reconfiguring them as in Plex. But don't worry, they have a lot of Docker options in here. We'll cover that a little bit later in the video. First thing I want to do though is go over here and just point out that the layout is a lot different. So even though it's similar, like here's jails, plugin services, sharing's little pull down, they did, there's a little bit different. So we have data protection is actually where a lot of the things that you would see under tasks and like replication and scrub tasks, they've just kind of moved them here. So it is a little bit of a layout change, but it's still pretty navigable and it's, you're not too lost if you're familiar with the TrueNAS platform and finding things wasn't that hard. Shares are under shares. And as I said, there's none right now, but let's go over here to system settings and we're going to general. Manage configuration. We're going to upload a file, choose file. This right here, TrueNAS 12.04 is just a standard TrueNAS 12.0 U4 backup. I did nothing special, made sure I exported keys and things like that. So, uh, you know, all the configuration is in there. We're going to open, we're going to upload. It's going to upload the config. It's going to reboot and we'll skip ahead so you don't have to wait. It takes a minute to reboot and then we'll have all of our shares back. We'll have our pool imported with its encryption keys and the NFS shares and the replication tasks and all those and we'll show those working. All right, the system's rebooted. We'll go ahead and log back in. And we'll get storage. It's going to take a second to think and away we go. There is the pool that we created when I was in there. Now, one thing to note is, as I said, I can't get any of the systems to bring over from the jails, but the shares are all working. So we go here to shares. Here's our Windows SMB shares running Unix NFS shares. And let's go ahead and attach to one of them. Put the username and password that I created in core. It copies over that too. I think that's the right one. Yeah, perfect. And there's my share with a bunch of random files inside of here. And let's go ahead and look at the storage and the snapshots. And even all the snapshots are imported. So there's quite a few of them. Here's why it paused on that. Uh, I have a snapshot job running, I think every minute. So let's go ahead and look at data protection. Oh yeah, there we go. Every hour in an hour, uh, every minute in a few seconds. So each one of these is keeping all these extra snapshots, but all those jobs came over. Here's a replication dash that is running successfully. So we can go ahead and kick it off and continue. I believe it'll give me a message in a second that it should complete. If not, it'll wait for another snapshot. But the important part is the task came over. That only leaves us figuring out what to do with the application. So we go over here to apps and it says, what pool do you want to put them on? And we'll put them in the gross public pool that we created here. And it'll go ahead and kick off and start the job. Now, this does pause a lot because this is just a slower Atom hardware we're doing some of the testing with, but I will be moving some of my other systems that we have here over to TrueNAS scale, at least a couple of them I want to do some testing and really, you know, give this a thorough once over because there's a, there's the using it in the lab environment like I am where I test a few things and see that a few shares work, but then there's the, hey, how does it hold up when I have virtual machines running either within it or running as a storage target? And I want to set that up and I have not taken the time to really dive into it like that, partly because I'm using this slow hardware. I just get aggravated with setting it up when I wait for things like this. But through the magic of video editing, we'll jump ahead to when this is done configuring. Successfully configured. And we can see if there's any installed applications. I think I'd actually put one on there before. You can switch back and forth between TrueNAS scale and TrueNAS core. Matter of fact, it started up one thing I had on here before. But you will have problems if you do this. And that's what this little notice is over here. New ZFS version feature flags are available for this gross public pool. Now, upgrading pools is a one-time process that can prevent rolling systems back to earlier TrueNAS versions. It's recommended you read the TrueNAS release notes and confirm the new ZFS feature flags before upgrading. Now, no problem, we're gonna upgrade, so I'm not gonna go back on this particular system, but that's something you 
need to consider if you're going to test this out, make sure things work, and you can go back. You can switch back to that TrueNAS core system as long as you don't upgrade the ZFS features. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. We're going to upgrade the pool because there's no going back and there's really nothing important on there. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. Successfully upgraded the gross public pool. Awesome. And uh, yeah, that's it. Now it's no going back. We are now using TrueNAS scale on this system. Of course, this is just a lab system for this video, so not a big deal there. But overall, I found the system to be stable. We actually, and they've been deleted because we rebuilt the system a couple times. Uh, we built a Windows VM in here. We built the Linux VM. Both of them seem to work. Uh, as I do some more testing, I'll do some future videos on that. As far as the apps go, the available applications list is kind of small, but they have the ability here to launch Docker images and pull from Docker. So future videos I'll do on that as I kind of get the hang of that system so I can create a proper tutorial for it. The other interesting thing is what Chris Moore mentioned right here, an improved application selection, including support for third-party repositories such as True Charts. And this is really neat. This is the ability to add more applications to the system to automatically install. So you go to manage catalogs and they have an entire catalog manager here where you're gonna be able to go through and add more applications. Uh, this is something, once again, I'll do in a future video on, but it's, you know, beta, we played a little bit with it and got some of the other applications in there to install. And I found it quirky, but I think it's mostly because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's, I'll just be very honest with it. And until I really understand it well, I don't want to do a tutorial on it where I don't give all the right answers. Now, one thing I'll admit that just feels weird, but I really like, and let's see if it breaks something, is the fact we have apt get update because it's not just based on Linux of course it's based on Debian so we can apt get update and I'm not sure if they're supposed to do this but hey why not it's got the ability to do it so let's do it apt get upgrade and it allows us to update things as we go. This is going to be interesting seeing how this plays out in a big picture but I do just kind of get excited the fact that this is built on Linux which is much more familiar to me than BSD, but for some final thoughts on this, I do not think the BSD version TrueNAS Core is going anywhere anytime soon. I think we'll see it for years to come. I believe both code bases will be maintained for a long time. And it's because the tried and true TrueNAS Core is a very stable platform. And for a lot of, especially the commercial clients that we have sold these to, they are expecting something to have at least a, you know, maybe a five year life cycle and not be turned off and not have any crashes. And yes, TrueNAS Core is a very dependable system for that. Their new bells and features and whistles and all the things we get with this is going to be awesome. I'm going to be excited with many of you playing with this. And, you know, I like the cutting edge stuff, which eventually will turn into that stable platform that we'll be installing, but it's going to be a long time for those of you wondering if this is the end of TrueNAS Core, and not really. They're going to keep developing both products side by side, but obviously there's plenty of excitement we have, especially under the Docker images, and this has been one of the hangups of you know people who want to build everything into their virtual machine stack and have their storage server all be in one place. I think TrueNAS Scale is going to do a good job of that with uh, the KVM and some of the apps on there, especially for the home lab users. I think this is going to be a real slam dunk, so to speak, in terms of a lot of adoption in the home labs because, well, putting it all in one place and consolidating into one server that's all based on Linux is going to be some happy stuff for sure. Uh, but this is Tom Lawrence, and uh, see you guys in the forums and leave some comments below. But if you do decide to try this, don't, don't report beta problems to me. Please note, they have an entire place to report those. I see that because sometimes people say, hey, I'm having, I'm seeing this problem. Can you, uh, people have messaged me like on Twitter and say, hey, can you, uh, let people know about this problem. I'm like, let the developers know. I am not the developer. I'm just an enthusiast uh, user who also will be reporting problems as I found them through the proper channels so we can get bugs fixed and overall make the product better. Maybe last words are, I wonder if this will break that. Well, I ran app get update. It does boot, but it no longer goes into the system anymore. So you we're going to have to probably switch back to the core on this lab or just reload scale. But it's... Uh, it's broke, but for those of you wondering what the hardware looks like, sometimes lab environments are not pretty, but you know, they get the videos done. But so don't apt get updated unless you know what you're doing. Clearly I don't, uh, that definitely broke it. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. 
If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.